FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is March 19th, 2020. Well, uh, unless you've been in a hole, you know the coronavirus, you know the worldwide pandemic, but there's a pandemic of fear that's far eclipsing the actual damage that the virus will inflict. And by all accounts, it's being media driven. It's turned into a political football, a political event. And well, the person you're about to hear from when uh, people say you got to get your head examined, well, that's what she does. And her name is Dr. Carol Lieberman. Dr. Lieberman, you're wor- you were billed as the terrorist therapist. And that's probably a skill set that is particularly uh, beneficial at this point in time. How did you become the terrorist therapist? Well, I am a born and bred New Yorker. And even though I was out of New York at the time of 9-11, my heart is still in it. And so it, I took it as a personal wound and uh, asked myself, what could I do as a psychiatrist to help the world, to help America, of course, first and then the world, Uh, to cope with what is going to be the most uh, traumatic event of our lifetime. Now, of course, coronavirus is now uh, coming up a close second. Um, You know, of course, with coronavirus, uh, it's germs that we're battling and not uh, not terrorists. Yeah. And so... So, yeah, it was very traumatic. I was uh, in the New York metropolitan area when 9-11 took place and uh, still, uh, you know, I got some PTSD from it. I was supposed to be in the city that day and, uh, you know, my all my appointments got canceled and, uh, you know, it was it was just uh, unbelievable what took place. No one was prepared for it. Uh, this is not quite the same, is it? Well, um, no. You know, actually, also, I should say that my daughter was um, in going to college in Manhattan at the time at Barnard. So I was getting blow by blow. You know, that made me, of course, concerned for her. And I was getting blow by blow descriptions. Now, the difference um, with coronavirus is that we are, I, I say, scaring ourselves to death. We are. Um, you know, I developed this uh, syndrome that I call the co- coronavirus stress syndrome, and there are 10 symptoms and so on. But we have moved. I mean, yes, we have that, but we have also moved to uh, mass hysteria and panic, and we are doing ourselves in um, the financial aspect of it is uh, really devastating. You know, after 9-11, the markets was closed, the stock market was closed for four days. And um, now we are not, haven't been doing that. And I think we should, I'm not that I'm a great financial expert, but, but it seemed to have helped after 9-11. And now of course the market stops for 15 minutes when things get especially crazy right before. But, um, but with all of the different industries that are being affected and with all these closures now, not only the cruise industry, but it's just spreading. Now restaurants can't be open or, or only for takeout and bars can't be open. I mean, you know, everybody is thinking of this social distance or we're being told, I'm not saying everybody's think well, <laughs> we're thinking of it because we're being told about it, that that's what we should do. But And there's a point to that, um, the idea of flattening of the curve and so on. But You know, scientists um, have been disagreeing as to how long um, the virus lasts in an atmosphere or on a surface and how far away we should be, six feet, 15 feet. I mean, so while people are trying to figure this out, we can't really outwit the virus. What we need to do is much more simple than that. We need to do what we have been told since we were little kids to do uh, to keep ourselves Wash your hands. Right. Wash Wash your your hands. hands. 
<laughs> Wash your hands, eat nutritious food, uh, take vitamins, get enough sleep, get enough exercise. I mean, those are the things that are key as long as we keep ourselves healthy. And of course, in this case, I would certainly add um, doing what you can to lower your stress, meditation, listening to calming music, uh, taking walks in nature. Um, you know, we have to make ourselves psychologically and physically as healthy as possible. And then if we meet a coronavirus um, from somebody else or sitting on a banister, um, we won't be as uh, susceptible to it. Yeah, which is totally rational. And the media has got its own agenda as always here. Uh, they can't show buildings collapsing you know, every 10 seconds, which is what they did after 9-11. So instead, they keep flashing up statistics that barely change from moment to moment. And the statistics, when you look at them, I mean, I'm looking at the New York Times map. And while it's definitely increasing by an increasing amount, it's actually the percentage of increase in the number of people diagnosed, confirmed, is actually going down. So yes, we had 800 people one day who were diagnosed, who were confirmed, but that 800 people was less than 20% of the total. So that's not exactly the stuff of, of uh, pandemics, is it? Well, and, al and also, I mean, the, the number of people diagnosed really doesn't tell us anything because it has a lot to do with how available the kits are and all that. What I think is much more significant that, you know, of course, they're not really paying much attention to. They did at the beginning and then somehow this has disappeared. Um, but it is still true that the actual everyday flu kills, uh, hits and kills many more people than, um, than a coronavirus has or Correct. will. I mean, um, in, in this year, 2019 to 2020, the flu season so far, it has, the regular flu has killed 16,000 Americans, 16,000, and yet nobody's talking about that. Yeah, that is very true. They're not talking about that. They're not talking about the fact that the people who are falling victim to this are the elderly, the very elderly, people over 80 are most likely to be felled by it, people with immune uh, compromised immune systems. Uh, they make it seem like everybody is a potential fatality. And in fact, nothing could be further from the truth. Yes. And, you know, I love it the way um, uh, different mayors and governors and so on are, are giving ages for when you're supposed to stay home at 60 or 65. And that's it. It is 80 plus that are the uh, that's the big danger. I mean, it's just absurd to um, to say that uh, people younger than that uh, should be so freaked out that they should stay home. And besides, um, what are the, why are they staying home? Is it to protect them or is it to protect other people? I mean, um, you know, obviously people who have, well, that's one of the things that I suggest in terms of keeping yourself healthy, that if you uh, know that you have some kind of a chronic condition, such as heart disease, yeah. um, or if you're immunocompromised, um, then you should go to your doctor, a regular doctor, not because you have symptoms of coronavirus necessarily. I'm just talking about anybody who doesn't have what they think are symptoms of coronavirus. Um, they should go to their doctor. If people have underlying conditions, they should make sure that they are in the best shape, that they're taking the right medicine and so on. And if you don't have an underlying condition, then you should go to the doctor and just get a checkup just to make sure you don't have an underlying condition. But most of the people who get coronavirus, it will be a mild case of something like the flu. The percentage, the actual rate is still around 1%, the death rate. Um, and it is much higher for regular flu. And, and it was higher in, in China the death rate for coronavirus, but that's because everybody lives very closely together in China and they yes. don't have great medical care. And uh, bad, especially the older parts of China, filthy, disgusting, you know, thousands of years of uh, filth have accumulated mm -hmm. in one place. I've been there before. I've seen it with myself, myself. Mm -hmm. And most of the people who died, the men over 65 
were smokers, which is an immune mm. suppressant in and of itself. So the thing is, we should be treating this where the people who are most likely to get uh, infected and have a negative outcome, perhaps uh, dying from it, uh, those people should quarantine themselves until this thing has gone over it. The other thing, doctor, and you're an MD, you know this for it to be a fact, is that the flu is seasonal and that this virus, which appears to be similar to SARS, there was just a study released the other day from China that said for every one degree temperature increase in, uh, and that's Celsius, in the temperature, the mm -hmm. percent, the R factor goes down by like 4%. And for every 1% increase in humidity, it goes down about two and a half percent. So the fact is, by all by all accounts, the most likely scenario, we can't say for sure, is that this thing is going to end in the spring when temperatures increase and they didn't even measure the uh, the amount of sunlight, but sunlight that we get in the spring and summer goes way, way up. Uh -huh. Sunlight is the best disinfectant, isn't it? FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Silver One Resources is an exploration and development company backed by strategic investors Eric Sprott and SSR Mining. At Silver One's Candelaria Mine Project in Nevada, there is already a historic resource estimated at 127 million ounces of silver, which Silver One is developing and advancing. The company's Phoenix Silver Project, located within the Arizona Silver Belt, is an early stage exploration project on which native silver vein fragments have been discovered near surface. One grab sample assayed an astounding 14,688 ounces per ton. Yes, that's right, ounces, not grams. Silver One has tremendous exploration potential, is extremely leveraged to the price of silver, and is cashed up and poised to increase shareholder value. Silver One trades in New York under the ticker SLVRF and in Toronto under the ticker SVE. To learn more, go to silverone.com. That's silverone.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Well, it, yes, it certainly helps. You know, the, the key factor is that the more we allow ourselves to get stressed, and that is partly as a result of how much we watch television, listen to the radio, go on social media and so on, and talk with fear-mongering friends, um, the more that we get stress out and, and ha have these fears, allow them to, to overcome our common sense, the more our immune system goes down. We know, we've known way before coronavirus, that stress decreases, weakens the immune system. And so we are actually making ourselves more vulnerable to catching coronavirus the more we worry about it. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, anything that uh, depresses your immune system is going to leave you more susceptible to to getting uh, ill. It's uh, it's almost like a self fulfilling prophecy, and right. and really uh, health. So much of it is psychological. Maybe you could say that all physical health begins with the uh, sound uh, mental health, right? Yes, that's right. That's absolutely right. Yeah. So so. Uh, so we sang here like the old song, uh, I think it was by, uh, I can't remember his name. Don't worry, be happy because <laughs> everything's <laughs> well, going to be yeah. all right. Well, um, <laughs> maybe, you know, be, uh, be concerned, but be concerned about making yourself as healthy as possible with all of these basic things that you're supposed to do to keep yourself healthy. Focus on that. How can you eat better, especially with some shells? You know, it's interesting in the uh, stores, in the grocery stores, um, some things, of course, besides toilet, in addition to toilet paper, um, are off the shelves because people are panic buying. But it was interesting to see how some of the things um, left on the shelves are some of the healthiest yeah. things that we should be eating, like fruit and vegetables. Uh, this, is, this is madness. I went in, I'm in Florida here, I went into the Publix, and it's weird because like in a hurricane, everything disappears off the shelves. But here it was selective. And I saw bottled water that was still in plentiful supply because nobody's worried about the water system like you do in a hurricane. Hand sanitizers and uh, anything uh, dealing with uh, 
any antiseptic thing was gone. Toilet paper was gone. Paper towels were gone. Eggs, of all the things, eggs were gone. But everything else, and then my son was looking for oatmeal. He couldn't find it there. But everything else was was there in plentiful supply. And when I went to like a specialty store, it was hysterical because the, the, the shelves were fully stocked. There was nothing in short supply. So they're oh, not worried yeah. about food. They're worried about, uh, <laughs> you know, about uh, availability of toilet paper. Does this make any sense whatsoever? Well, and it's so crazy how that all started. It started in Australia when there was this rumor that um, toilet paper, at least in Australia, is made in China. I mean, that's what the rumor was. I don't know if that's true. And so since China was so hard hit and a lot of people weren't going to work, were told to stay home from work, they wouldn't be making toilet paper was the thinking, the rumor. And so therefore there would be a, a, a lack of toilet paper. But then that spread to America and probably in other places as well. And so it's just it's just like it just shows how people aren't thinking for themselves. It's just a reaction. Oh, my God, there's not going to be enough toilet paper. We got to get toilet paper. Yeah. Um, it, it, it just shows the degree of insanity, mass hysteria that there is going around. Do you remember uh, when Johnny Carson was on The Tonight Show and he started a rumor inadvertently of there being a shortage of toilet paper. And before you knew it, it was the supermarkets around the country were cleaned out. <laughs> and he finally, he had to go back on and say, ah, sorry, I was just kidding. And this is what it reminds me of, because there's no reason uh, for it to, but nonetheless, when I was in the supermarket, I found myself looking for it just to see if it was there. If it was there, I probably would have bought a case, but not even needing it. It's kind of like the gas shortage is exacerbated when everybody's right. topping off their tank. Right. 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 Yeah. So. Right. At least we're not going to have that because, uh, you know, if people, if people listen and stay home and they're not going to be using up much gas. So there's not going to be a gas shortage. But. Um, it is, it is really very unfortunate. People need to get back to common sense. And stop with this mass hysteria and remember that that's lowering their immune system, that it's not, you know, we, there were studies after 9-11 that showed that the more people watch television, like of the Twin Towers falling down, which, of course, you could see at any time you turned on the television, the more they watched that the more they developed post-traumatic stress disorder, even if they weren't anywhere near New York. Yeah. Um, and. And that is what, you know, you were talking at the beginning with the statistics and so on and all the different coverage. People who are sitting in, and consuming hours of media are also getting something like post-traumatic stress disorder, whipping themselves into a frenzy. But the, the one difference is that um, with 9-11, with I mean, yes, we were all nervous that there was going to be another attack, um, that this was the beginning, but but then that kind of calmed down. But with coronavirus, we get more uh, uptight every day because we think it's, you know, I mean, we're being told anyway that it's going to get worse and worse. And yes, it probably will get worse in the sense that there will be more people affected, but it won't. I doubt it will reach the, the numbers of the regular flu. And in any case, um, as I said earlier, it's not as lethal. So so it's like we, we've created um, a boogeyman or some, you know, it has been created and um, and we are just running from it without thinking. Yeah. And and the, I, I've told people the damage if we if it throws the world into a major recession or even a depression, which is very possible at this point, the number of deaths from the resulting economic fallout yeah. are going to be far, far greater than anything the coronavirus ever could have done. And that's what I find really distressing. Yes. I mean, look at all the people um, who are, there are people being fired right and left. I mean, laid off really because, um, because their businesses aren't, can't work. I mean, restaurants, of course, or other of the airlines. Um, there are lots of businesses that are having to lay off um, many, many workers, tens of thousands, if not more. And so those people 
are feeling stress, economic stress. And that's making them more vulnerable to coronavirus. So, yes, this is um, compounding in ways that it really shouldn't have to. Yeah, could not agree with you more. So the solution here, because we deal in solutions on this show, and yes. it's a funny thing. Let me just share with you. I've been doing this podcast for nine years and started out right after the financial crisis. And... I felt like I was going to rebrand, change the name because financial survival, you know, the economy is better. People aren't really focused on it. And then this thing hit and then all the economic fallout. And I said, "Uh oh, I'm relevant again. I better not mess with my branding here. (laughs) Uh huh. Uh huh. So, yes, this is going to be relevant for quite a while. Yeah, I think Um, so. Solutions. I have a seven step plan for solutions. Um, not, not necessarily, well, they affect the economy, but these are more, uh, health solutions. So the first one is to calm yourself with stress relievers. Like I was mentioning meditation, music walks in nature. I also suggest, uh, rescuing a pet. Then, um, we talked about the basics of staying healthy, hand washing, eating nutritious food, taking vitamins, getting enough sleep and exercise. I mean, these are things that we don't really do normally. So we need, that's why we need to focus on them because, uh, you know, who gets enough sleep these days? Yeah. Then yeah. avoid consuming fear mongering news stories or associating with fear mongering people. People mm-hmm. should strengthen bonds with friends and family, especially those they live with, because psychologically you need something called social support. Um, that is something that is very valuable, especially during times of stress. We need to know that we have people who have our back. And if you are isolating or quarantining or whatever, you still need to stay in touch with family and friends and colleagues and so on. Then, as I was saying earlier about visiting your doctor for a checkup, whether you're sick or not. Um, and then uh, if the if your coronavirus stress syndrome is out of control, then seek psychotherapy. If you're stressed in general, whether it's financial or uh, family stress or, you know, work relationship stress, whatever kinds of stress you're feeling, um, you might want to at this time seek psychotherapy. Um, you can do that online too. It's never as good as in person, but if you don't want to go in person, um, or if you can't find a therapist who will see you in person, I'm still seeing my patients. I'm not doing anything differently than except for paying more attention to what I was saying about the basics and so on. But, um, I'm still seeing patients in my office, for example, Um, And then last but not least, envision a plan, a plan B, if you are uh, having to stay at home, you know, try to work from home, try to come up with another career or a temporary career that you can do from home um, and, and keep your mind occupied, you know, try to figure out how you can successfully um, thrive at home financially and also emotionally. Um, if that is what you choose to do or, or are made to do. Yeah, I agree with you. You got to find another plan. You don't want to just give in to the fear and just uh, sit home and do nothing. Anyway, uh, we, we kind of have to wrap up now. Uh, can you tell us, uh, Dr. Lieberman, just uh, where the best place to find you is and how to connect with you on the web and get your books and such? Sure. Um, well, you mentioned my the terrorist therapist. Um, I do have a website, terroristtherapist.com, um, but I also, my basic website is drcarol.com, and that's carol with an E, D-R-C-A-R-O-L-E.com. All right, excellent. And hey, any questions or comments, any uh, thoughts out there, how you're dealing with the coronavirus, or what you think about it all, just to email us. The email address is kl at kerrylutz.com. And we answer all, although not as always, not always as rapidly as we would like to, as quickly as we'd like to respond. Getting so many emails now, it's unbelievable. Or leave a comment on the YouTube channel if you're listening there. Wherever you're listening, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me a lot when you do that. And don't forget, go over to our website, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up for a newsletter. Hey, Dr. Lieberman, really appreciate you coming on. We will talk to you again soon. 
after all this is done to get a little <laughs> post-mortem, if you will, and see, sure. see how the reality didn't live up to the fear. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.